I grow potatoes in a number of ways. Here where I have trees, I grow them in 18 gallon totes. I have the holes drilled in the sides that prevents the roots getting in and it also provides for proper drainage. In areas of my garden where I can grow in the soil, I'm starting to use these small raised beds. The material cost for a unit like this is $2.75. It provides me an excellent solution for no-dig potato growing. It also helps with my succession planning. G'day, I'm Gary. Before I show you how I put this together, I'll show you a recent harvest that I did. That way you can decide for yourself whether something like this will work for you. So this is one of my prototypes. It's about 16 inches tall by about 20 inches in diameter. The cardboard held up pretty well. It's starting to break down. It's separated a bit. It held together just long enough to get some potatoes to grow. So what I'll do is check the potatoes to see how many I got. What I planted in here are a small variety. So I'll just remove the top. So they're starting at four inches below the surface. I'll just get the bulk of them out. Got quite a lot of little ones. Now there's some medium sized ones. These are a white variety from memory. And this is some of my soil mix for potatoes. It's got a little extra wood chips in it. I'll just dig the center out. What I'm looking to see is how far the roots went out to the sides. Okay, so now I've gotten down six to eight inches above the ground. And it's gotten pretty hard down there. So the top soft still, it's easier to dig with my hands. As I start digging towards the edges, I see that the roots pretty much went almost all the way out, which is a good thing. May have root pruned them a bit. The issue I had with this was it dried out fairly quickly, so the water still wicked through the cardboard. Not too bad because I've got a decent amount of soil in here. It's around the same volume as an 18 gallon tote. So I've kind of got most of that out. What I might do is just unclip it and pull it away and see what that looks like. So I just have to fold the clips over. Easy enough to do. I've got that open. Okay, so there's my wire basket. This cardboard on the inside is breaking down. This can go to my compost. There's still a few more potatoes there. So that's held up pretty good. As you can see, it's packed down a little further down here. And it also has a lot of roots that went all the way out. So the roots actually travelled out to the cardboard, which surprises me a bit. So I'm sure the roots went down into the native soil here. We're able to access some of the nutrients down there. I see there's quite a few earthworms down the bottom here. I just brush this to one side so you can get a better look at it. So this down here is packed down. It's still fairly loose, but it's packed down a lot tighter than the top here. And that's it. So all I have to do now is sift this soil. I'll be reusing it. And this is how I separate my potatoes. A lot of the smaller ones this is a half inch screen, will fall to the bottom, but then they'll grow back as volunteers, so it's not a total loss. Normally I do this a little bit at a time. 
I'll separate it further from the soil that I've got here. But I'm going to say I've got a good pound and a half of small potatoes. I like the small potatoes more than the bigger ones. We just boil them up and you don't even need butter for them. Like I said, I'll compost this cardboard and I can reuse the cage over and over. To make my basket for my raised bed, I buy rolls of fencing wire. I get 50 foot by 3 foot rolls. From there, I cut them down into 10 foot lengths. Out of each roll, I get 5 lengths. So they cost me around $45. So 5 10 foot lengths are $9. I use these for my compost bins. I cut it down in half. Now I've got a roll that's going to be $4.50. With that I can make a large raised bed. Once I have it at this size I can cut it down in half. So if I cut this in half I end up with something that costs me $2.25. To cut the wire I use sheet metal cutters. You could use a pair of pliers. To make the smaller baskets, I just measure out five feet. So on one end, I leave the two inch piece of wire. I'll use that for hooking everything together. And the other end I cut flush. So now I've got my wire cut to five feet. So I bend the wire into position like that. I loop it through, and then I simply fold it over. If you're not comfortable with working with wire, you could always wear gloves. Now I have my basket together. The prongs can be pushed into the soil. It's very sturdy. It's 14 gauge wire. It's a lot better than chicken wire. So I've got this together. I'll put that to one side. I've already started on this one. I've put some of the cardboard on. To fit the cardboard nice and snug, I cut it down to 16 inches wide, and then I roll it up into a tube. By rolling it into a tube, it conforms to the basket a lot better. To pin the cardboard in place, I use 16 gauge rebar tie wire. It costs around $10. I cut it into 3 to 4 inch lengths and then I bend it into a staple. The top of the staple is around 1 inch wide. To attach it to the basket, you can use a screwdriver or another sharp tool just to pop some holes through the cardboard. Then I just push the staple through from the outside and I fold it over on the inside. You just want to make sure that your hands aren't on the other side when you're pushing things through the cardboard. So it's a simple matter of just popping some holes, cutting some wire, sliding it through. folding it over. I don't need a lot of staples. That's just enough to hold the cardboard in place. So I've got a basket already started. The next thing I need is the plastic sheeting. The sheeting that I choose to line my baskets is 6mm thick. I buy the rolls that are 10 by 25 foot long. A roll of plastic sheeting is around $20. When I cut it at 16 inches wide, I get 18 pieces, $1.11 a piece. If I cut that in half, I get 36 pieces. That works out to 55 cents a piece. To cut the plastic, you could use a pair of scissors. But what I've found, the easiest way, is to have a straight edge. I happen to have a square that's 16 inches. And that's the size that I want. So it's just a simple matter of running across. 
And what I now have is something that's 16 inches high. And if I roll it out, it's 10 foot wide. I would use this for the larger raised bed, like the one behind me. The circumference of that is 10 foot. The one this size, I cut this in half. So I've got a piece of plastic that's five foot long. Because I overlap the wire, I reduce the circumference by four inches. So this is actually four inches shorter than five foot in circumference. So that when I put the plastic in, it's going to go all the way around. So the plastic just goes inside like that. To attach the plastic to the basket, I follow the same steps as I did with the cardboard. I take my screwdriver, punch some holes through, get a piece of wire, bend it, make a staple, and fold it over. I work my way around the top, and I'm ready to add soil to it. So now I've got a basket with cardboard on the outside, black plastic sheeting on the inside. The black plastic sheeting doesn't have any UV protection, so that'll last two to four years if it's exposed to the outside environment. It will last maybe two years here in zone 10A. If it's buried underground, it might last up to four years. The cardboard, as I showed earlier, starts to break down. The reason I'm doing it this way this time, the cardboard will protect the black plastic sheeting from UV rays, and the black plastic sheeting will protect the cardboard from moisture. So basically what I'm building is a pot with an open bottom. So this is going to be my raised bed for my potatoes. I'm going to set up a lot of these. By having a design like this, what I'm going for is the water will go straight down, won't be able to wick out the sides, so the only evaporation will be from the surface or transpiration from the plants growing inside. The soil that I'm going to put in, this is a mixture of what I removed from the one I showed earlier, and I added extra compost to it. So it's nice, rich, soft soil. I also emptied a bucket of potatoes. And this is just the straight soil from the potatoes that I harvested. So the first thing I'm going to do is pour some of the potato bucket into the bottom. I'll push that around and that gives me a base. Then I'm going to add some leaves. These are purple tree collared leaves that I harvested. A lot of them are buggy. This will solve two things. It'll remove the bugs off my plant, plus it'll provide a nice, rich compost in place. As this breaks down, it'll feed the potatoes. So by the time the potato roots get down to this level, this will be broken down and it will really help the potatoes. So I'll just lay this out along the bottom. I've also got some artichoke leaves that I cut up. So I'll throw those in. I've got a squash leaf. I've also got a squash that didn't quite develop. I'll just break that in half. And I'll throw that in the bottom. Then I'll add a little bit more soil. Cover it over. And that brought it up to there. So now I'm just going to put the rest of the soil in. I also added a little extra wood chips to this. That will add extra potassium and phosphorus, which is good for the tubers. So I've got that about four inches from the top. As time goes on, this will sink down. 
What I have here are some purple viking potatoes. I'm going to plant these. These have already cheddared or started to grow. I might just add five to each container. And that's it. So now I just have to water it in and take care of it. My soil already has a lot of earthworm activity, so that's going to jump start things. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to leave a comment, feel free to leave a comment. I think I've covered everything I needed to cover. With that, thanks for watching, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Goodbye.